in the movement. It's a train without brakes. All you haters sit down and go to church and pray. Itch, 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 Guess what? We're taking over. You can hate. We already know. Many people may think it's the design, the cutouts, uh, things like that. It's not. What frame geometry really means is that mainly, and what, what in my opinion frame geometry means, and I can tell right off the bat, is if you pick a machine up and you look down it like the the peep or rear sights peep and rear sights and you don't see that this rear deck or saddle is lined up with your coils the heads on your coils it's not lined up you have a junk machine and let me let me show you what I'm talking about since a lot of you probably don't know because I see a lot of people saying that Chinese is okay. Well, it's not. Because there's a lot of things that they don't understand. Now, first of all, it's got to be solid. Solid. Less moving parts on a machine, i.e. ergo, the less welds, the less um, you know, parts that it has to it, the guts, the mechanical parts, etc., etc., the better now what I'm talking about with the rear saddle and rear deck being aligned with the coil course and you knowing that this is a great machine take a look okay let's position that as best as possible do you see the rear screw on that deck and the coil heads, the cores, the tops, perfectly aligned. Okay. Now, let me take uh, Joey D's bar off real quick because that is an infinite iron bar. My bar is right here. A little late from the same day, trying to get some shit kicked out here. 
<clears throat> so we'll go over a little bit of frame geometry. A lot, of, a lot of things that I look at too and, and try to do is, you can see here on the bottom, where it's been, here's the vice area, and then you've got that slit. Sometimes, and I don't, I actually, I don't own any machines that go to the second screw, but some of my machines go all the way back, they zigzag up, and they, I'm ass backwards on this camera, it zigzags back up and then comes back down here. Now, um, what that what that enables me to do is it takes the fulcrum point off of the uh, the vice base and the vice tube area, okay? Because if you have two pieces of iron like this and it stops here, your fulcrum is going to be right in here, and you have to try to squeeze that around that tube which is going to be i don't know it Key. it it is what it is but obviously you see machines going way back here and then around and that's science what that does is the fulcrum point would then be back here somewhere enabling this to wrap around and squeeze tighter around your tube ensuring that there's a proper fit now one thing that i've come up with and i have not seen on any machine and uh, show me if I'm wrong, is I've knurled the inside of my vice area. So basically, on my machines, on all of them, I'm gonna have a threading or a knurled, uh, you know, vice clamp area, okay? That's gonna ensure a grab, it's gonna grab on. Same with, with the, uh, the tubes that P9 will be producing. They're going to be knurled at the at the two parts where it goes in as well. If if your parts do not align up on a machine, you're in trouble. Um they try to get it right. Now pay pay special attention to the uh, the Chinese frame. Okay, you've got the screw for the binding post here, okay? Now, if you directly look below, whoosh, draw a line, you've got the hole to the first coil here. Okay, so they are lined up. They do have some geometry there. Now, the dimension from here to there means something as well. Same with, with the angles. Okay, so basically, the difference between a liner and a shader. So... Let's say we want a liner. Okay. My bar, first of all, is going to be lighter than my shader. And my color is definitely going to be heavier than my shader. You can pack color with shading, adjusting your vaults and your contact and your gaps. But ideally, you're going to have a heavier uh, A bar. Okay. And in the position from the dead space. On the rear deck from the dead space is this ladies and gents let's get into that real quick I say dead space a lot and everybody asks what that is so let's get that going dead space why all right all right okay so not set up properly I'm not wearing gloves I'm not planning to tattoo with this right now um, I just like smelling it from time to time. It's it. it comes out of the case and I smell it. I get my kicks on Route 66. Like I'm smelling bitches. If you've been to the military, you know through boot camp that smelling women is a serious situation. When you don't smell a female for a long time, it don't matter what she looks like or how she smells. One walks by and you're gonna 
spell it. You're going to get up on that. Okay? I promise you. I mean, I, the first girl that I smelled, she was probably like 65. She was a nun. And it was about a month in without smelling anything other than boot boot camp it's like prison you get a certain smell there and it just attaches to your membranes this lady walked by she was gray she was bushed out i knew it but when she walked by i smelled it and i kept it in it was great anyway off point subject so now, if we want to line, all we technically all we have to do is have our correct A bar and spring tension setups and spring gauges. But I'll tell you that 18 and 18 front and back, that's going to be your universal. So if I were to use that and then uh, a universal uh, standard standard A bar uh, with the weight and geometry there, then I would just position my gaps, my voltage, and my uh, my contact screw okay and that's how you're gonna adjust your throw that's how you're gonna adjust your speed this is your timing speed speed in front the speed of your machine is basically your gaps your front contact and your uh, front spring that's your timing the rear serves purpose as a tension throw now the rear deck to the rear of that a bar that space between there that space Right there where my eyes at. Can I see? Can you see? Right there. That is called your dead space. Now that's adjustable. And these springs are adjustable. And that's why they have slots or grooves on them because you can adjust those. That's what they're meant for. Not too much. I mean, what you're going to get out of that is probably a broken spring after a couple of tats. You know, a lot of guys that I know, they'll, they have a shitload of springs just sitting nearby because they'll use the spring set one time. They use, you know, every single time you're losing some sort of fidelity out of here. Although, on good uh, blue rolled steel springs, you're not going to lose too much by, you know, fidelity or power resistance out of your spring unless you're bending back and forth. If you do this and you bend and you're bending constantly, you know how you adjust it and you're bending up, adding a little bit more tension for throw and stuff like that, then, and then you bend it back down, you've just lost a lot, a lot of uh, dynamic to that spring. Don't do that too much. Do it once and do it gradual. You know what I mean? You, you can add tension to a spring, but you never could subtract it. So really there's no reason to go up and down. It just fucks up the spring, man. I mean, seriously. And then and then everything's all off. Now, adjusting that rear space in the back is like that diving board. You know, a couple of my videos prior, you understand that. It's a diving board action. The further you go out, the more dive you're gonna have. The more, boom, your throw. The more throw you're gonna have, right? So the closer that you're back, the more tension back there on that, the faster that gap's gonna open and close. And that's called your complete circuit. And that circuit and the, the contact is going to hit that boom, 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 boom. Okay? If your frame geometry isn't true and correct, if this binding here, if this here does not match, okay? If this part here does not match, Okay, this part right here, if this does not match here, you do not have proper frame geometry and your machine is never going to run right. If the rear deck does not line up with your coil heads, you do not have correct uh, frame geometry. It will not run correctly. If the distance from here to hear your vice hole opening is not true and correct based on the machine that you're designing, you will not have a machine that runs properly. If any of these moving components or components of geometry on a machine are faulted in any way, shape, or form, the machine will never ever 
ever live to the standards of a professional tattoo artist and will always remain a scratcher's tool. We're here to change all that. Stop buying Chinese shit. Now, with that said, this is Chinese shit. If you want to build on this and you want to gut this out and you want to go ahead, go ahead. Geometry is all off on this fucking, this machine. I'm not going to argue with you guys. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not Mr. Know-it-all. I'm telling you, I won't build on this. Okay? I won't do it. I just won't. Um, nothing. I mean, look look how ridiculous this is. This, this is what people are tattooing in the streets with. And you wonder why people are against us. Let me tell you something. All you pros out there, you pros, you fucking know. You know that you starting somewhere like this, probably a dirtier environment than this. At least I have clean paint on the walls and a couple of Italiano freaking frames hanging up in the back for some good pasta eating. Okay? You probably started with a 1955 Buick, which is beautiful, but I guarantee you oil was all around you. Okay, and you were zitten, 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 getting it and zitten, eating, zitten, zitten. I guarantee it. But you're gonna come to me and say, Well, no, I actually got my apprenticeship, but I've been in the business for 25 years, kid. All right, man. If, if that's the case, then you come apprentice me. I'm always willing to learn. I don't know everything, I come up with my own tricks, I come up with a couple of things. I've read books, I've I've gathered and inquired information just like everybody else in the world has. And I'm always open to new ideas and thoughts. It's not just my way or the fucking highway. It's a highway that I'm allowing all you to be on with me. No blinkers necessary. Get in where you fit in. Just don't bump my fucking car and tray paint with me. That's all. If you do, me and you... We're going to be painting my vehicle's fender together. And maybe we'll produce some nice art on that biatch. That's how I am, man. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not out to fight. I'm not the most perfect guy in the world. But I'm damn serious about this. I'm serious about this. I'm serious about my tattooing. But I'm not as serious about my tattooing as I am to teach tattooing. And teach the right things. And build the best machines in the freaking world. Some of the best. I, I can't say I'm going to be the best. I'm going to try to be. <laughs> hate me if I want to try to be, baby. Let me go get him a bottle. So, my son, Tassilo, you guys know him. He wants to say something. What do you want to say, Baba? Can you see? Here. What do you want to say? Put that there. What's that? Um, I, I wanted a... Um, Here, that? speak into the mic. I wanted dad then then I then I said then I wanted to say I love dad and I put hearts and stars for dad. Really? Hearts and stars? Yeah. What's the the hearts mean? The hearts mean love and the stars mean um like like you. So you like and love me? Give me five then. Oh, and you even put the pen in your mouth. That's awesome. So, how do you feel about Daddy's tattooing? Good. Do you want a tattoo? Do you want to actually tattoo? Here, you can't see you. The world can't see you. A lot of these guys have kids, too. You say hi to their kids. What do you want to say to everybody's kids that are out there, all the tattoo artists' kids, and everybody from the movement? What do you want to say to their children, all the kids like you? Hi. What's your name? Toslo. So, what do you want to say to the world? To all the kids? Do you, do you like tattooing? Yeah. yeah. All the kids at school, they be almost bad, then, then be good. Sometimes they be good, and sometimes they go on the bench and they can't play. Then teachers say, um, you can't get off, you can't get off. Okay, well, we're not going to talk about school. Let's talk about tattooing. Do you like to draw? What? You like to draw? Yeah. You love daddy? I love Cuckoo. Cuckoo loves daddy. 
Remember that? Like, how how my name is Cuckoo too? Well, we called you Cuckoo because you were crazy. Oh. You ran around beating everybody up. All the people beat me up like that. No, we're not gonna let that happen. Okay, say bye. Say hello to the movement. Hello. And say goodbye to the movement. Bye. Look how old Daddy's getting. Yeah, because you still wear your beanie. It's my favorite beanie, huh? Yeah. I have beanies, too. I have my um, we'll Batman. Say, I know, Bubba. <laughs> How about you say bye? Say bye, bye so Daddy can finish this video real quick. Okay? Yes. Go draw Daddy another picture then. I'll be right here with you. Okay, Love I you. Be, I just want to be right here. Okay, you be right there. I love you. I'm going to draw your dad again like this. I'm going to draw another snowboard. Okay. That's my son. I love him. He's my favorite. My boy. Well, they're all my favorite, but he's my favorite. I can't make people in my favorite. I can't make Maverick's you? crazy. Wait until you guys see him. Oh, my God. Oh, One of my God. twins. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, I just have a new assistant, too, Dad. Yeah, Scarlet. I mean, we could talk about a lot of things now. Now, uh, a lot of people wonder what a yoke is for. Well, if you use an iron uh, frame, if you use an iron frame, then you a yoke isn't required because the frame in itself acts as a yoke. But if you don't use an iron frame or a, a, a nice magnetic frame like steel, uh, 1012, 1018, et cetera, et cetera, then you'll have to use a yoke. And that yoke will complete the tank circuit of both coils and uh, it, it converts the AC, DC, comes back, and it comes back, comes back, comes to the capacitor that acts as a little battery that holds charge and blah, 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 blah. We won't get into that in this video. Let's uh, move forward and progress on that. Um, like I said earlier, you look at everything from washers to shoulder washers to um, screws. Now, like I said, mentioned in, in the earlier video, if you look at these screws, um, They've got smart, and what they do is they stamp these little letters and their, their manufacturer's numbers around there. Well, the good, the good material do the same thing, the good screws, okay? And I'll have to get out that, uh, that micro camera and go, go over that. But um, those are things that you want to look for. Um, when you're looking at vices like this, what happens is you have this, this dumb little thing in, the, in here that it it leaves your frame like this it's just we're talking craftsmanship lacking there's no craftsmanship here it's, it's a straight up machine just doing everything putting everything in even the metal there sucks the threading sucks this i mean it's going to strip out 110 percent man it's going to strip out so quick going in and out of that and it does not hold the end of this metal on metal the way that they have it it slips and slides man the only thing that i can tell you as far as a tip for one of these type uh, vice clamps is to put a little tiny bead inside here, like a polyurethane bead or a little plastic bead, and stick it in there and screw that all the way to your tube to where that ball is pressing up against the tube, creating pressure so that it's not metal on metal sliding around. And it's the same metal, too. It's like I just... I want away from these. I don't believe that these should go here. I mean, I know that some of the greats had those, but there's a reason why we've gone away from that and gone to swing gates and things of this nature and things on the bottom to where we cut back and use fulcrum points and really clamp onto that. Um, and this is what I talk about. It's knurled right here. It's got this, this grip. Well, I'm gripping all of my stuff inside here. All my vices will have this type situation going on to where when it does clamp, it has teeth and it binds to it. Not to include that all my tubes that I want to produce and mill out or lathe, um, they will also be knurled as well. So they're going to get two and two. You're never going to have any sliding or slippage there. That was one of my pet pieces I had with when I started out with scratching. And uh, not knowing anything about anything and just buying these freaking kits was that these guys, fuck man, I could not keep that tube while I was tatting from sliding around. And that's ridiculous. I mean, if you're sliding around here and there, you're really just, it was on me and I was scratching on me. Before I ever touched anybody else, I did me up real good. 
And one day I'll have a, a tribute on myself on what things I've done to myself and I'll show you some scars and I'll show you some scratch marks and I'll show you how far I've progressed uh, from where I've learned, you know, and technically from way back in the day using a guitar string and uh, a toothbrush and a freaking motor all the way until where I'm at now. Now, haters can say and hate all they want, and I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. I've come a long way. I know that a lot of you guys are coming a long way. I know that you guys are paying attention to me and that we're both speaking back and forth together, and I'm including you. I think that I'm probably up on your big screen right now, and you're feeling me. And you're probably going to pause on my next videos because I like it. Sometimes I do it on purpose because I know that you're going to pause. You're going to pause. I like doing stuff like that, man. But onwards and outwards. Now, we can go into talking about steel versus iron. All right. Iron is great. It's an awesome, 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 awesome frame for tattooing. Um, it's, it's highly sought after. A lot more than steel and there's a couple of reasons why that is and let me explain first and foremost first and foremost is that it doesn't it doesn't keep in the residual magnetics the magnetic uh, field from the, the coils themselves doesn't reside in the DNA of of the iron okay it's met it's less magnetic holding like, I don't know the proper scientific scientific terminology for that but um, steel will become magnetized over time and that will mess with the the tank circuit and your coils and sometimes you'll get the sticking and you'll you'll start getting a, an operation that's not very um likable okay and what you'll have to do here's a trick it's known but uh here's a trick for you guys that don't know out there is you take apart your whole machine until it's bare stripped uh your steel Go ahead and slam it on the concrete. That's how you do it. Slam it on the concrete, hit it with the hammer real quick. Your frame will be instant demagnetized. Lickety split. Um, iron, you're really not going to have that much problem with iron. The problem with iron that, pe that artists don't like from where I've seen and talked to is the fact that iron is real heavy. And in when you're tattooing for, you know, eight hours or more in a day, um, it tends to mess with your wrist. And if you get older, carpal tunnel, and you have, you know, you have things like this. You know, I, I don't know if you can see, but the, the freaking busting things and having the calcium pop out of your bones. And creating the, the fucking arthritis from hitting or punching or whatever. Yeah, it's going to hurt and you're going to feel it in there. Okay, after a day's use. So having something that heavy is something that you really need to, to get acquainted with. And that's why when people are first starting out in training, put a pin in there and just draw with it. You know, if you want to tat yourself, tat yourself. That's what your thighs are made for. That's what God gave you. God created thighs for two things. Three things, women, tattoos, and chicken. And chicken. And chicken. And chicken. And chicken. Those are the only reason thighs are here. We could have crawled, okay? We could have been snakes. Some of us are out there. I see you. But it's okay because Perseus is here to slam that shit down. But I see you. Kane, you're charging 750 bucks a pop for sitting in and drilling. Cool, I'm not going to hate, bro, because you're a lot more established than I am. But I guarantee you, I'll be there. You know, I don't need to be a fucking part of a clique to show that, you know what, I got the same amount of passion as you do. If you think that I can't pick up a Dremel and start drilling on a nice design and make some design straight out of this dome, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm a little dramatic, but fuck it, man. My mom told me to go at it full bore, and that's what I'm going to do. Bing, bada bing. Things are taking a while, and they're going to. Each patent is very expensive. I am vigilantly and desperately getting this going as soon as freaking possible. Trust me. I want it more than you guys want it. Trust me. 
I see all your emails. I'm, I can't answer all of them. I'm sorry. Anybody watching this that I have not responded to you, I cannot get to all those. I'm flip-flopping through, and I'm trying uh, to catch up, but it's just not going to happen, okay? It's probably never going to happen. Um, I will let you know that, yes, machines will be available. Yes, P9 is going to launch, and yes, movement is real. I'm not letting a lot of people into the movement uh, page right now, which is only Facebook. I'm having problems with um, – with, uh, GoDaddy giving me my freaking name back, which is p9customs.com. So there's a couple of things that I'm working out, man. And um, we're going to get there, though. It takes a lot. Each patent, you're talking upwards of 7 to 10K a pop, okay? So for you little kids out there that just bought your happy birthday bike for 120 bucks, we're not messing with that. We're trying to launch a pretty big freaking company. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, what... What does this really do? What does this front contact screw and post really serve purpose? Well, what it does is it, 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 it's, it adjusts your timing and it adjusts your throw. That's what it really does. Um, you can use a shader frame as a liner and a liner as a shader. It's just all right here. But... Most tattoo artists aren't even fluid with understanding the mechanics of a machine. They know the basic parts. A bar, O ring, screw, coils, blah, 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 blah. But they don't understand the actual dynamics and the physical science of, of these machines. So basically, they just grab and go. If something fucking goes wrong on this, they'll send it back to the builder or they'll take their secondary daily and they'll use that until that one can get fixed, either by some other shop guys that have some knowledge or, or someone, you know, someone that builds machines and is going to go ahead and pop shot that for a couple, you know, 20 bucks. Cool. And fix that up for them. Um, basically, it's, you know, it, this, when this front contact screw in accordance with your A bar, I call it the alpha bar, your alpha bar, your freaking uh, springs and the rear deck space and the gap between the coil, the rear deck and the back of the A bar is true and correct. Once this section is taken out and the lining section is put in, and this is adjusted to line, this right here, you're going to have a liner. It's how far back on that spring will determine if you're a liner or not. I've seen people make comments about what a cutback is. A cutback, that's real simple. Either you have the frame geometry. This shit's burning my hands. Let me get it out. I don't hold shit too long. So basically, if all this is correct, your A bar, your springs, the distances between front and back, and the position of this, including the gap, is set. Um, basically, tune in makes it faster. Tune out makes it slower because you're separating those gaps to where the return from spring to gap uh, screw is hidden okay it takes longer to do that and hit and then close that circuit and close that cycle the cycle so basically you can have a shader frame set up as a liner and you can have a liner set up as a shader. Here's, though, the controversy. And here's the truth, though. And here's what I believe. It's all right here that determines if it's going to be a liner or a shader. It's all right here. It's called your coil. If your coils are eight wraps, eight layers... Those were not intended to push more than six needles initially, okay? People get away with it all the time. Badass artists do it all the time. Okay, fine. But they have technique. They have ways. They have tricks in the skin. They got all kinds of shit, okay? I'm saying invention-wise, invention-wise, and predominantly speaking, and technically speaking, the coil for eight, and also depends on how fat, and you know, 
are we doing half inch? Are we doing a candlestick? Are we doing, you know, there's a whole bunch of varieties now, but initially back then, an eight was for pushing uh, simple lining, simple chaining. A 10 was for pushing bigger groups for a little bit deeper lining, deeper shading. A 12 was a fucking beast and that could have pushed anything. Okay, and that's just how it is, man. I, I look at how much a coil is from a six. Yep, they have sixes from a six. Nobody uses them. But from a six to a 12 and then up, they have more than that. I mean, let's think about this. If I were to make a 30 and let's say a 24 AWG, okay? But let's say a 30, pretty fat, just one. Don't you think that I'd, I'd be able to cover a lot of ground with that and a lot of torque, a lot of magnetism? I probably would. But the deal is, is would it be too heavy? Would it be just easier to make two to complete a circuit? Now, you say, well, if it's just one, how are you going to complete that? There's ways. I won't present those ways here because that has to do with my innovations. I can't tell you that. But, yeah, there's ways. Absolutely. fucking I don't, I don't need two here I can use one you've seen them before with the uh, the post on the back that separation and it's just a shelf it's a shelf fitting and just it's the core without anything on the back just hitting it and you know keeping it in the spot and then it's just the front coil pounding its ass there's other ways though there's other ways I'm totally going to reinvent the coil period there's two types that that I'm coming out with One's the magna coil, which is utilizing wire, but it's nothing that you've, none of you have ever seen before, and I don't care. None of you. None of you guys. Not workhorse irons, not FK, not fucking none of you. None of you. Not icon. Nobody has seen or knows my magna. My magna coils may go into other things, too. I'm just saying. I'm not playing when I say this stuff, and I am an innovator. Okay, so... It is the way that it is, and I, I fucking love it. Okay, so we've covered a couple of basics here. Um, we could go into crazy geometry where this is all set up wrong. This is a, um, a next generation um, machine, all right? And it's aluminum, so you need an inset yoke. So an inset means that it's in here. It's inset, obviously, inside. Um, and I have removed that and I'll tell you the truth, this thing's gone through beast. It's, it's pretty much toast ladies. It's toast and gentlemen. Yeah, this thing's fucked. If I take this off right now, I'll probably never be able to get it back off. Anyways, I, this is the wrong position on purpose. Okay. I'm fucking around with things. I, I don't care if it's a $350 machine, 300 bucks. I don't. I rip them apart and mess with them. Not reverse engineering. You'll never see something like this from me. I don't really like it. It's a good concept. I can't lie. I cannot sit here and hate on these guys. You can tell that this is uh, CNC'd, that this is machined, computerized machined um, design, which is okay. I'm not too bad with it. I'm fine with it. I will have CNC things as well as machine by hand because I believe that the heart and passion and soul goes into that. Like a couple of you guys out there um, are really passionate about that, and I like that. Um, but you can get a lot done with doing this as well, CNC and milling. Um, this was a good concept. What the, what the concept of this machine was to do was to – it's three pieces. And what it was built and designed to do for next gen was to – separate the two main and divide the two main pieces of a machine that uh, have vibration which are these outer and inner walls it would be the part that has the deck and the, the the plate there and then the outside main plate plus enabling this part right here to go uh, vibration free so what it did is it kept it here it makes it kind of go back and down and travel back and forth that's what i'm assuming by looking at it scientifically that's what i would assume is that it's trying to take the it's splitting these apart from each other um, as one instead of being welded together into one solid vibrational pattern going down thus down into the, the, the tubes and then into the needles into the skin 
look like it tried to take it here and the vibration from this point would go up inside and down back again and, and kind of contain in here on each side. And aluminum is, you know, it, to me, it heat, it, it heats up. That's, that's the thing for me. And um, with the yoke, you're still going to get heat. These machines do heat up. I don't care what anybody says. They heat up. That's why a lot of guys don't use them that I know. But then again, around the world and Europe, a lot of people do use them. So it really is artist preference at that point. Me, though, on a personal level, maybe if I'm, I get more experienced in tattooing, I'll like these better. But to me right now, it's just a piece of aluminum, uh, an aircraft aluminum that I can set to the side. What I do like, though, I, I will note, is that um, they have a couple of unique features. And one of the features that I do like is they they are smarter than, um, they're smarter than the aluminum frames over at Superior. Superior Tattoo has frames like the um, Bumblebee or something like that, or the Dragon, or I forgot what it's called, but it's a pretty dope little design and it's an okay little starter machine. Um, but they don't actually put a piece of steel inside of the aluminum threading. So what happens is that screw will strip out that threading real quick. Here though with next gen, they have absolutely stuck a couple of pieces of uh, you know, metal in there to reduce that threading. Now I don't know why there's a couple of spots for your your uh, clip cord to go in. That that's just like another added loss of time for me, I guess. But I guess when you're slamming out and drilling out really quick, it doesn't matter. But I don't I don't see the purpose of that. I'm actually gonna go away from those type of clips anyways. P9 doesn't really want to have the traditional clips. I mean, yeah, we're going to have them, but I have machines that don't utilize that. They don't utilize the same needle system. They don't utilize the same coil system, the same armature bar system. They don't utilize any of that. No, it's not a rotary. It's a coil machine. Um, just not nothing that you guys have ever seen before. And that's all my mom and she knows it. Um, so I'm trying to think about what else to cover. We've covered a lot. Hopefully you guys are understanding when you have the degree set here, a lot of people want to go all the way out to the tip. Look, if you're directly over pretty much up and down and about there, then you're looking at lining. You start going backwards. You could have a cutback shader and a cutback liner. Really, it all depends. To me, it all depends right here in the coils. But to other people and other people training for uh, machine purposes, they would say that it's, it's really in the bar setup, the spring setup, and the contact angle okay which is going to determine your throw like i said the more further that you go back the faster that's going to be as a machine and the more depth that you have on this contact uh needle or the contact screw you're going to obviously close that gap quicker and you're going to have a faster machine the voltage on the tattoo um, supply does not really determine it does not determine your speed okay it may minute nothing of impact though the the voltage is meant to put volts and voltage in and you know the the electric co-current inside of your your coils okay it doesn't touch the freaking the the coils aren't a, a motor that that's where you guys are getting confused if the power supply was to adjust the speed of the machine that would be a rotary okay that would be your rotary your rotary is going to speed up the voltage on the rpms on that damn machine on the rotary and that's going to make the, the machine go faster it doesn't work that way here the power supply supplies the current to the coils which give the coils more ohms more resistance and inside here builds up for a p more powerful magnetic frequency as the tank circuit is completed and when the uh, alternating current and direct current is then switched from positive to negative through the capacitor and then some it gets really technical but 
It does not speed it up. It does not. The speeding, the speed is only here. And to close those gaps makes it faster. To strengthen up these, to strengthen, make them skinny and shorten them up on the front of this spring, including the rear where that's your throw. But you close all that up and you make it smaller, it's gonna react quicker. You open it up, it's gonna be delayed. You feel me? It's gonna, it's gonna sweat, it's gonna bounce, okay? I'll come up with something to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about because I see people arguing with me that that you are wrong about that. Don't tell me that the fucking power supply has anything to do with speed on a tattoo machine because it doesn't. I don't care what nobody says. It don't. That, I don't need to go into a, a fucking famous builder's um, arena and sit down and get the tricks of the trade and the top secrets to know that that that's just common science. That's common sense. That's physical science 101, third grade. It is. This is obviously probably an EDM wire cut um, frame. You got to be careful in choosing what is Chinese EDM wire cut opposed to what is actually cast machined and then worked into uh, perfection. Okay, this is just, there's no solid angles on this everything's whack um screw holes are off it's got a little dragon face uh kids like this stuff get away from it man who cares i would rather have something that's freaking beat the hell up with some rust on it seriously and then i would something else and then we'll be like oh well it's got rust on it so you're gonna it's the rustoleum disease that you're gonna spread Whatever. I'll take an old school 1960s machine over some of these new freaking Toyotas that I see. I'll take a, a damn 68 Chev over a freaking Rice Rocket any day. I'll take a Harley over a Speedster any day. That's just who I am. I mean, if I get on a Rice Rocket... I'm DOA tomorrow. That's just too much for me. You know what I mean? I can save some gas in a Honda because I need to. Because at 4.15 a fucking gallon, I'm okay. But I want the beast. I want to boom it. Now, zip, zip, zip. If you want to slice up the skin, go ahead. If you want a nice monotone speech, breach. From the rear and smack your ass cheeks, then fine. I'm not gonna argue with you guys about Chinese shit. I'm not gonna argue with you about Chinese garbage. Now, I have been looking at higher end Chinese frames so I could do more study in that. I am not, however, gonna tell you. That I'm sold on Chinese materials. I'm not. Um, and there's also a difference between being made in China and being made in China, assembled in the USA. China is the largest steel exporter in the world. All right. So obviously, a lot of the shit's going to come from China. That's not what I'm talking about. If, if, if I have to put it down into layman's terms, what I mean is Chinese mass production companies biting off pro builders and copying their stuff and trademark infringements and patent copyright infringing on these builders. And this is where you guys over at like Workhorse, man, should be thanking me because, you know, I don't got to get up on my channel and, and tell you, you know what, I don't think that these Chinese dudes should be knocking you guys off because really, I don't give a fuck what you guys said about me. Um, it's all good. Let bygones be bygones, whatever. We'll see each other one day, and we'll maybe have some coffee and a fucking tea party. Know what I mean? Not worried about that. Let's compete with uh, with uh, products and products sold when the time comes. Let's just do it that way. But um, I don't agree that these Chinese guys need to be knocking nobody's machines off like that. I know there's a lot of heart. And soul and craftsmanship being put into these machines. Don't care who they are. Don't care if I like them or not. I'm not going to hate against them on that level. On a personal level, piece of shit. 
on a builder standpoint, awesome. I can't lie about that. I'd be a dick. Well, I'm a dick, but I'd be a bitch. Why? Well, yeah, I'm not a bitch. You know what I mean? So let's get into some other things. All the way fucking down to springs and A bars. <clears throat> Let me give you a, a secret, a trick, okay? A lot of you guys in the movement know about this. A lot of you guys know. You go down to, um, you go down to, uh, it's real late, guys. Birthday. I'm trying to do this video. I got done with my birthday today. I did that one video, continued it, and here I am again. I haven't slept. So when you see this, it's probably a couple days in the future. Um, go down to like AutoZone, you know, a place like that. And you go get the feeler gauges. Well, if you look at the feeler gauges, they're actually stamped and marked. You can make springs out of that. And they're actually stamped and marked ready for you to go. They got 16, 18, 22, 20. You know what I'm saying? It's all stamped ready to go. They got the front spring and the rear spring. Thin ass little front ones and thicker in the back. Shape it up. Get a Dremel. Cut it out. You know what I mean? Do the damn thing. You can use those. Feeler gauges. Eight, ten bucks. A whole set of them. Go to Craigens. AutoZone, they've got them hanging. They're going to wonder, why why are we out of stock in feeler gauges? K-A-G-E. That's the reason. Well, you know, what we what we want to do, um, <clears throat> I didn't touch this on, on the machines, but another thing is balance, okay? I forgot to mention balance, and balance is a huge thing. When, you, when you're looking at something that's just not proportioned, Totally off balance. This is off balance, man. I've got a lot of nonsense happening up here. Uh, I've got a lot of nonsense happening. Opposed to, this is off, but opposed to something that's going to nest right here. You know, how, how long can your hand withstand it? That's the question. When you're a true artist, you're working at least eight hours in a day. Probably more when you're really good. You know, how heavy is that machine? And how simplistic is the design? Do you know why machines like a simple J-frame or a Bulldog or uh, a micro or the Seth or Canes, you know why they sell so much is because not only the craftsmanship, not only the name, but actually because they work. Um, they're, they're comfortable to artists. It's not always about what they look like, man. When you become a real tattoo artist, I'm, um, I, I'm certain that you're gonna feel these in your hand. You're gonna know what, what feels good to you because you know what, if this doesn't feel good, that's not gonna look good. You know what I mean? Get over everything else. Learn this. Me, I want to learn this first before I do any of this. Because if I didn't learn this first before I did any of this, I wouldn't be no good. No, I had to take my weapons apart and put them back together. Take them apart, put them back together. Take them apart, put them back together. Da, 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 da. Clean them, spit shine them, spit the inside of all the nomenclature, all the moving parts of a freaking weapon. And my, my thing is the M4 carbine, M, M68 reflex scope and 203 grenade launcher. Katonk, thakonk. That's what I'm about. You take it down and you fucking keep doing it over and over and over again until you get it right. And that's where apprenticeships fail. That's where, you know why? Shops don't have time to do that. Nope. A shop is going to tell the apprenticeship to go fucking fetch him his food, go clean the bathrooms, go clean the toilets because the stories they've heard from like Jailer Day, uh, Sailor Jerry days. Okay, and the apprenticeships where it was like fucking how um, how um, Dringe was saying, Dringeberg, he was saying, you know, and I respect that cat, dude. He'll he'll tell you straight up, and he's like, I make one by one machine, and he knows some shit, man. That guy Dringeberg, if you haven't seen his interview, go watch it, man, because he's he talks a lot of real stuff in that shit, and and he's serious about his business, and I really respect that guy, I really do. But, you know, back in his day when he had, he was talking about how they were throwing fucking, he'd make a hundred needles in a day, or a thousand of them, 
and at the end of the day, they'd slam him at him, and he'd have needles sticking in his skin. That's what's up. I mean, I, I do believe in something like that, bro. I do. Um, it's, it's earning your stripes, really. You want to do this? You'll do this. I don't give a shit what I throw at you. You're going to do this and stay here, and I'm going to see you tomorrow. That's what that is, and that's why a lot of these cats get mad. But you know what? Apprenticeships aren't always like that. You're talking, you're, you're talking all, a lot of these, these haters against me about apprenticeships is because the only fucking thing that they can say against a scratcher is the fact that um, the, the person hasn't been uh, cross-contamination certified or uh, the spread of communicable diseases or a you know, uh, certification program for um, disease control basically is what it is. Bullshit. Let me stress to you. Yeah, you. That's an eight-hour class. Bam, bam, eight. See, I could show you credentials that, you know what, I could chop your leg off and give you a chance to live. Quick. I can stench you up, sew you up, without infection, and tell you how to prevent it. I don't need OSHA, and I don't need the health department, and I don't need... Any of this other bullshit to tell me anything different. I have more experience, and this is a God honest truth, fact. I have more experience than all you fucking shop guys, unless you were a cop or served in the military, dude. Period. Because I've been certified ying to the yang to the no to the zay, bro, in that. So stop the shit with cross-contamination and your garbage about fucking diseases. You talk about white or cream colored gloves I can tell you why they invented the black ones so you can't complain anymore because when I have my black gloves on out of sight and out of mind you're not seeing so you don't hate but if I put on the other ones and you start seeing the ink and the little you know droplets of blood and shit you start panicking you know why because most of you are in apprenticeships and you're scared shitless about this cross contamination if you're that scared, first of all, go to church, the movement church. Second of all, if you're that fucking scared, get into a bubble or order yourself a full body condom. A full fucking body condom available at workhorseirons.com. All right? Because all those guys jump in fucking condoms all day. Now I will say, in my hands, I've had, um, I've had some machines. I haven't even owned them. I've just, I've had them in my hands. Um, I've met a lot of really good people in the industry. A lot of them work in um, shops as well. And uh, a lot of the guys, they don't know anything about machines. And I end up explaining to them what I know, um, which isn't a whole lot. And there's a lot more room for advancement in my mind in my mind's eye into doing these things, but now I'm off into developing my own systems and my own innovations when it comes to this. Am I gonna tr try to reinvent the wheel? Yeah, I probably am. Am I gonna get a lot of hate for this? Yes, I am, man. Because at 2.07 in the morning, this is what I'm doing on what was just my birthday. But you know what, it's important to me and I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna go with it. I've been reunited and it feels so good. I thought I lost this beanie, and I got it back. That shit is my thinking cap, and I love it. Anyways, movement soldiers, you guys are great. Keep doing the good work. We're going to keep hitting this. I'm going to cut this shit short. Um, I will see you guys soon. Keep posting. Keep uh, knowledge base out. I would, however, like to see you guys um, learning more, teaching more, asking more questions, but more or less... Actually, I would like to see you guys answer more questions. If you guys have knowledge, which you do, I'm seeing your tattoos come out. Some of you ain't there yet. A lot of you are. Um, ask questions. And please, troops, with those questions, please take a couple of minutes to answer them. Okay? This time last year, that we were banging over there. We were banging constant. You could not follow a post quick enough. 
We've slowed down. Shit's going good. But listen, we need to rectify, amplify, get it up, get it moving. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to start posting more tutorials, and uh, we're going to get into that. I'm really working hard at other things as well. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with the family as well as that. I'm trying to keep up with you guys as well as that. And I'm trying to keep up with company endeavors as well as that. So, um, we'll get into it, man. I think that next we'll get into the actual weights and the actual spring setups and armature bar setups uh, that we need to do our job. What will it take front and rear spring to make lining happen? What will it take to make color happen? Can I alternate springs and switch them up and what would that do? Can I change out my capacitor maybe instead of having a, uh, a regular uh, 47 for a shader, could I switch that around and use that for a liner? I think so. Yes. And, and I'll explain how and why. And actually, if you looked at a couple of videos prior to this one and you saw me digging on the AK, that line work was done with a 47 uh, microfarad. So, yeah, it can be done. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I did it. Therefore, guess what? And I'm going to be uh, Skyping with a very good gray wash artist down in um, a good artist, period, but a damn well-known artist down in L.A. We're going to be Skyping soon. And we're going to actually talk and speak about gaps and capacitors and slowing down that machine opposed to speeding it up. Um, what is the lighter trick to leave you off with a good note? I don't have any needles with me right now, but let's say this is the needle. You know what? Light the tip of the needle, spread the prongs. There you go. Lighter trick. Deuces. Dedicated to the movement. It's a train without brakes. All you hear is sit down and go to church and pray. It's it, 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 it. <laughs> P9 Customs. It's all about scratch. Scratch harder. Cause guess what?